Hello dear students and welcome back to the third class on the chapter data handling for class 7. So in the previous class we left off uh, at exercise 3.2. Here we will try to do one more problem before we move on to the next topic. So we have already done question number one. We will continue with question number two. The, the run scored in a cricket match by 11 players is as follows. Let me write down the data that is given. So the data is 6, 15, 120, 50, 100, 80, 10, 15, 8, 10, 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So these are the runs scored by, uh, by 11 players. So we have 11 scores here. We are going to find the mean, mode, and median of this data. And they are asking, are the three same? So in the first, sorry, in the first step, we will be finding the mean. We already know that mean is nothing but arithmetic mean. So mean is, the formula is sum of observations by number of observations. Here sum of observation means you have to add all these datas. <coughs> 6 plus 15 plus 120 plus 50 plus 100 plus 80 plus 10 plus 15 plus 8 plus 10 plus 15 divide by number of observations. These are the scores of 11 players. So we will divide by 11. To save time, if you add all these, you get 429 by 11. Now let's divide 429 by 11. 429 if you divide by 11. 11 into 4 is 44, so we will go 43, 33. When you subtract, this becomes 12, this becomes 3, 3 minus is 9. So we bring down 9, it becomes 99, 11 into 9 is 99. You're getting remainder, 0. So your mean is 39. The mean for these scores is 39. Let's move on to the next part of the question. Next is to find mode, mode and median. So to find mode, we have already discussed, we have to arrange these numbers in ascending or descending order. Here we are usually uh, arranging in descend, ascending, so let me write it down. 10, 2 times, 15, 3 times, then 50, 80, 100, 120. Now, if you look at these data, you can see that 15 is the only number that is repeating three times. The highest frequency is 15. Therefore, your mode is 15. Now, median. Median, we have already discussed, median means the middle value. So here there are 11 players, 11 datas, sorry, 11 datas. That means 11 is odd. So we can use this formula. So n is 11. So in place of n, we'll put 11 plus 1 by 2. So 12 by 2. When you cancel, you get 6. That means in the sixth place, you will find the median. Let's count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This 15 is your median, the middle value. So your answer is 15. And finally, they are asking us, are the three same? That means are the is, uh, mean, the mode, and the median same? We can see that mode and median are same, but as previously we have found, mean was 39. So 39, 15, 15. They are not same. So we will write there for, I'm sorry. No, mean, mod, and median are not same. 
So with this, we will conclude with mode and median. The rest of the questions are quite simple, same as this, no difference. Please try them at home. We will move on to, the, to a new topic. The next topic which we will be discussing is bar graph. Bar graph. Bar graph, what is bar graph? Bar graph is simply a graph that is uh, displayed using bars. These are bars. So this is a simple representation of a bar graph. Bar graph simply means a graph with bars. Okay. So let's look at the different types of bars. The first one we have single bar graph. We have two types. So the first one is single bar graph. The second one is double bar graph. Now to understand these two terms, let us look at an, an example first. So let's take an example. Uh, let's see that a table is given where subjects are given. Subjects, let's say maths, science, English, SS, and let's take this as marks. Uh, let this be out of 10, out of 10. So we can say this is eight, seven, six, and five. <coughs> eight, seven, six, and five. In maths, a student got eight. In science, a student got seven. In English, a student got six. In SS, a student got five. So first, let us look at single bar graph. Single bar graph, we will simply draw a gra uh, the x-axis and the y-axis, the vertical and the horizontal lines. Now here, looking at these data, the difference between them is one. 7 plus 1 is 8, 6 plus 1 is 7. So we can use, we can start counting from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Since 8 is the highest, I'll write till 9. Now here, this part will represent marks. That means the, uh, the vertical line will represent your marks. These are your marks. So obviously, the horizontal line will represent your subject. Maths, science, English, and social science, SS. Now, to start with, for single bar graph, to plot this on the graph, what we're going to do here is, now look at maths, it's eight. So eight is here. From 8, we're going to draw a bar. Mark this as 8. This is for maths. For science, it is 7. This is 7 for science. For English, it is 6. So your 6 will come somewhere around here. This will be 6. And for SS, it is 5. So your SS will come somewhere around here. So this is nothing but a single bar graph. That means single bars are depicting your data. Now let's look at double bar graph. What is double bar graph? It is very similar. It is the same thing only. Now there may be an instance. Let's say that we'll use the same graph to show you double bar graph. Simply we will add more data. Here let's say that this is first term. This was marks for the first term, and this is marks for the second term, second term marks. Now, he got six, seven, eight, five. Let's say that in the second term, the same student got six in maths, seven in science, eight in English, and five in SS. Now, we are going to use this same graph to show double bar graph, okay? Now in the second term, in maths, the student got six. 
So your six is here. So next to this graph, a bar that you have already drawn, on six, you can draw another bar like this. And they pick this as six. Next, seven. That means both are equal, seven. Here, it, earlier, the student got six. Now, the student got eight. So this is eight. And the same thing again, five. So now we have two, two bars representing marks for one subject. For maths, two bars. For science, two bars. For English, two bars. For SS, two bars. This is nothing but double bar graph. That means in one graph, two informations are represented. I hope this is clear. Now, let's move on to the next topic. And mind you, uh, there's one more thing. The scale, these numbers that we use, one, two, three, four, these are called scales. This will be estimated according to the data that we have. Here we had single digit numbers, so I have used one, two, three, four, five. Sometimes your data may come 30, 35, 40, 20. Sometimes it may come like this. Now here you can use 10 to 20, 20, sorry. You can mark this as 10, 20, 30, 40. So in this manner, you have to adjust the scales, okay? So with this, the topic on bar graph is over. Let's move on to the next simple topic. The next simple topic is probability. It is a small topic, probability. Probability means chances of an event occurring. Chances of an event occurring. For example, you toss a coin. You take a coin, okay? And you toss it. The outcome is sure to be head or tails. So when you toss a coin, it can either be head or it can either be tails. Similarly, if you roll a die, die or dice, if you roll it, you're going to get one, two, three, four, five, or six. Any of these numbers will obviously come when you roll a die. So these are the probabilities. It, one may come, two may come, three may come, four may come, five, or six may come. Now, similarly for coin, if you toss a coin, you may get a head or a tail. This is assured, right? This is the probability. Sometimes head may come, sometimes tails may come. So this is nothing but probability. So to find probability, we have a formula. Probability. The formula is number of favorable outcomes by total number of outcomes, all right? Probability is number of favorable outcomes by total number of outcomes. For example, in when you toss a coin, you are sure to get head or tail. Either one will come. Now, if I ask, what is the probability of getting a head? Now, when you toss a coin, head will appear only once. So the probability of finding a head is one. That means number of favorable outcome is one. And the total number of outcomes, head or tail may come. So there are two uh, outcomes that can come. So you will divide it by two. So this is how you will uh, use the formula in the coming uh, exercises. Let's move on to some exercise where we can further try to understand what really is happening here. Let's turn to exercise 3.3. Exercise 3.3. Question number one. In the exercise 3.3, question number one, uh, it is asked, use the bar graph figure 3.3 to answer the following questions. We, now, A, which is the most popular pet? pet? B, how many students have dog as a pet? Now, since there's limited time, I cannot draw. So please look at this figure, figure 3.3. If you look at figure 3.3, we, uh, we can see that on the a vertical line, the number of students is given. On the horizontal line, the number of pet animals are given. Now, 
The number of students and the pet animals that are given are dogs, cats, rabbit, hamsters, and others. So looking at this bar graph, we have to answer two questions given here. The first question is, which is the most popular pet? Now, if you look at this figure, you can see that dogs, the bar graph goes up till 8. Cats, it goes up till 10. Rabbit, it goes up till 2. Hamsters, between 4 and 6. In the middle, that means it, may, it will be 5. Others, between 2 and 4, that means it is 3. So we can know that cat is the most popular pet here. Because cat, there are 10 students who like cat. Right. So your answer will be cat. Cats. And B. How many students have dog as a pet? Now, if you look at this bar graph again, if you look at this bar graph again, they're asking us how many students have dog? Yes, dog as a pet. So, if you look at the bar graph where dog is given, it goes up till eight. That means eight students have dog as a pet, okay? So this is all about uh, bar graph. Uh, we will continue with the rest of the questions in the next class. In the meantime, I request you all to continue practicing what we have been doing till now regarding data handling. We have learned about arithmetic mean. We have learned about range. We have learned about mode. We have learned about median. Now we are practicing on bar graphs. In the next session, we will be discussing more about bar graphs and about probability. So I look forward to seeing you in the next class. Uh, please take good care and stay safe at home. Thank you and see you again.